Good afternoon. I'm Spencer Chandra Herbert, the MLA for Vancouver West End Coal Harbour. I was also proud to serve as the chair of BC's Rental Housing Task Force. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. Uh, we come to you, of course, from the legislature uh, on the territories of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, the Songhees and the Squamalt, and I want to thank them for having us here on their territories. Moments ago, David Eby, Minister Responsible for Housing, introduced legislation that will make life better for renters and rental housing providers. The changes are much needed and they came about because of advocacy from renters and rental housing providers and because they were recommended by the Rental Housing Task Force, which I chair. I want to thank Premier Horgan for asking me to chair the Rental Housing Task Force, Minister Selena Robinson, who had been the Minister for Housing at the time when I started the work, uh, Minister Eby uh, for listening to the voices of renters and rental housing providers, and of course my uh, other panelists on the, the task force, MLA Olson and MLA Leonard, uh, for their work on this. So we did a full review of the rental legislation in BC. Uh, we talked to landlords, we talked to renters, we talked to advocates, lawyers, we looked at other systems around the world to try and find a good package that would balance the needs of all parties to have a more secure, uh, a more successful uh, environment uh, for people to live. Uh, better homes, better housing, a better relationship between landlords and renters. While well, we did that work, we heard many stories from people, uh, stories I was familiar with as the MLA for the West End, stories about rent evictions, uh, where people would be given an eviction notice, told they had to leave because there were massive renovations coming, only to find out when they looked at the real work that was being suggested, it was just a coat of paint or just some tiles in the bathroom or in the kitchen. Work that could have been done uh, with keeping people in their homes, work that never should have led to eviction notices and that fear of eviction, uh, or real evictions because many people don't fight these kinds of things or they don't know their rights and they end up losing their housing. Uh, we heard about stories of massive rent hikes, we heard about bullying, we heard about the need for change uh, for all sides. We know that a lot of this was driven because people want to push a long-term tenant out so that they can jack up the rent and make more money. Most landlords don't do it. Uh, landlords told us too they wanted this practice to end because it gave them a bad name. They didn't like having to uh, work alongside folks who were just trying to kick people out so they could jack up the rent and make some more profit. Our government promised to take action to deal with these rent evictions, to deal with uh, the massive rent hikes, and we've come a long way. We've closed the fixed term lease loophole. Uh, folks will remember that uh, until we became government, you could be given a one-year lease and either face eviction or face a 50%, a 75% rent hike. We stopped that. The geographic area rent increase clause as well. Uh, folks in my neighborhood were facing 73% rent increases under that clause. We got rid of it. We helped turn 18,000 empty condos into homes so people could have a place to live through the use of the speculation tax. Uh, a personal victory, uh, we established the Compliance and Enforcement Unit. Up until this unit was created, there was no force to actually investigate um, legitimate complaints of breaking the law again and again and again. And there was no way to hit people with real penalties to stop them from doing these kinds of behaviors. Uh, we changed that. And in fact, uh, the Compliance and Enforcement Unit has done such a good job. I know many, many people are now happily housed in their homes instead of facing that kind of threat of eviction uh, because when there's a repercussion, people follow the law. We also cut annual rent increases in half. Uh, under the former rules, you used to be able to face 2% plus inflation. Uh, highest rent increase uh, in the last decade, I think, was 4.3%. We cut that in half, um, and now we froze it when the pandemic hit. And so uh, with these changes, I think life will get better for renters and rental housing providers, and I want to tell you what's in the bill. So as I mentioned, we're fulfilling our promise to extend the rent freeze till the end of 2021. That means that British Columbians will know that their rent cannot go up this year. This makes life more affordable and it, this makes it so that people can plan ahead. Moving beyond 2021, we've also made sure to change the law so that rent can only go up at the rate of inflation. No longer inflation plus, plus, plus uh, in the sense that it used to go up in. We know how difficult the rental housing market can be and how challenging it can be to find a place. That's why we want to make sure people can stay in their homes. 
So what we're doing is we're strengthening the law to stop rent evictions. It was, this was our number one recommendation as a task force. Uh, this is an important piece which will keep people in their homes so that they don't have to face a eviction notice for a phony renovation. No longer will people be getting re eviction notices for renovations that don't exist, for fake, evic uh, fake renovations in a sense. Whereas previously the landlord could just write up a piece of paper and slap it on the door and say you're evicted because I want to do some renos, which may or may not exist. Now they're going to actually have to apply to the branch to sh show them uh, the work that they need to do. Uh, we want landlords to invest in their buildings to maintain them. We want the life safety systems to be maintained. We want buildings to last for a long, long time into the future as good homes to be in. We also want people to have that security and so that's where we found the balance. Uh, they can make an application for that kind of extensive renovation uh, that has to be done, um, but we believe and we've seen it uh, that most renovations can occur while people still live in their homes. Uh, anyone who's lived through a leaky condo uh, knows that and know that you can live and many people do. Uh, most landlords actually I've talked to as well make sure that their tenants can stay because they want good quality tenants in their homes. If passed, these changes will come into effect July 1st, 2021. There are some other changes, things like expanding the penalties the compliance and enforcement unit can use. Uh, so if somebody was committing fraud, trying to lie to the enforcement team about what they were doing, whether it be a landlord or a tenant, they can actually be penalized for that. We're also clarifying the law around manufactured home parks. Right now, uh, park rules can be changed so frequently, nobody knows what the rules are, and so it's really difficult to either follow them or face enforcement action from the manufactured home park if you aren't following them. You don't know what the rules are, you can't follow them. So we're going to clarify some of those changes as well. Uh, for too long, we believe that renters and rental housing providers weren't listened to. Uh, they dealt with massive rent increases, unfair rules, no enforcement, uh, and a real lack of fairness. We know renters are struggling, uh, but we know that these changes will make a real difference. I'm always looking for ways to improve life for people in British Columbia, so I know down the road I'm sure there'll be more ideas and suggestions of other changes that need to happen, uh, and I'll of course continue to advocate for them. Changing the rent freeze, freezing it till the end of 2021, capping rent increases to the rate of inflation moving forward, stopping illegal rent evictions, these are all things that renters have called for for a long time, and I'm so glad that with these legislative changes we'll be able to answer that call. Thank you so much, and I'm Happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. As a reminder to everybody on the phone line, please press star one to enter the queue. You will be limited to one question and one follow-up only. I would also ask that you please take your phones off mute. You will not be audible until your name is called. First question is from Rob Shaw, Czech News. Well, hi, uh, Spencer. I, I just wondered if you could outline a bit more about what exactly does a landlord have to prove now? Or what kind of renovation is substantial enough to justify an eviction and what are the kind of you know uh, boxes they need to check uh, in order for that to happen is that spelled out in the legislation itself or is that a is that written in by a cabinet order or is that developed by the the, the branch or how does that work uh, thanks that's a great question um if you go to the residential tenancy branch website today you will see a very clear description of what is considered a substantial renovation. Um, we've already made some changes in terms of how uh, uh, the information is provided to landlords and tenants so that f folks know what is substantial and that generally involves things like uh, where it would be impossible for somebody to continue to live in the unit safely. Um, now that's not to say that uh, you can't do renovations in a unit and have that person still live there. They could go stay at a friend's place for a couple of days if you were needing to shut off all the water, that kind of thing. And so the tenancy could continue. Uh, really what we're doing is making it so that there's an application process that has to be done because uh, right now you're asking a tenant to try and um, become an expert in renovations uh, in to, to try and understand what is substantial and what is not. Uh, instead, we'd like the landlord to go directly to the branch. They can get greater certainty of what's allowed, uh, of how to work with their tenants, uh, if the tenant can continue to live there, um, and uh, they'll understand what counts as substantial. And really what we're looking at is things that uh, life safety systems of the building are failing, um, 
you need to do massive work to extend the life of the building. Uh, we know some buildings are in such a state of disrepair that there's no way that you could do a renovation in them uh, because they would be so substantial and so long uh, that people couldn't live there. Um, but our expectation is that uh, most renovations will be allowed to happen while the person still stays in their home. Do you have a follow-up, Rob? Uh, sure, thanks. It, so does that sort of short-circuit the um, like appeals process? I mean, if you have the, the branch approving a renovation that requires an eviction up front, then you wouldn't necessarily be able to go back to the branch to complain or, or appeal that decision later on. It's, it's actually that, uh, kind yeah. of... I totally understand what you mean. I asked the same question. Uh, the way that it should work is that uh, the landlord would approach the branch, say this is what we want to do, um, and the branch uh, with, would then be able to work with the landlord to say, well, this actually looks like something that you could keep your tenants there. This is not something that we think would need that. Uh, the landlord would then reach out to their tenants, uh, work with the tenants. Now, obviously, if somebody was refusing to allow um, building um, work uh, to go on in their unit at all, uh, necessary work, well then there might have to be uh, a stepping up of, of action. But really the idea is to be able to reach out to the tenant and say, the landlord's going to need to be able to use the suite for two or three days, the water's going to be off to do this kind of work. Can you work with that? Yes? Okay, well then we, this tenancy continues, we work together or we find some way to make that work. So it's about collaboration. Uh, obviously if a tenant and a tenant group feels that the uh, renovation is still not substantial enough, they will be able to appeal it. Uh, they will be able to make the case uh, for themselves about why um, what the landlord is saying may or may not be true. Um, so that won't get short-circuited. It just changes the onus a little bit so that the, the evidence of the renovation has to come first as opposed to the tenant getting evicted and then them having to fight after the fact to try and prove that the, the renovation wasn't uh, so large that they needed to lose their home. Next question is from Shannon Waters, BC Today. Shannon, are Hi. you there? Um, I'm wondering why this has taken so long. Like, it's been almost three years since the report came out. You're billing these changes as significant, as helpful. Why wait so long to introduce something like this? You know, I, uh, folks who know me know I want everything solved yesterday and that I, that I really... Um, I want us to move as fast as we possibly can, but I also want to make sure that uh, the legislation that does get put forward works. Um, it wouldn't be any good for us to put forward a legislative program that made it so that renovations couldn't happen and then we have a whole bunch of homes uh, getting dilapidated or made it so it, uh, it didn't work and people could still get evicted all the time. So really it was about reaching that balance uh, and I think we've reached it here. Follow up, Shannon? Yeah, kind of a double-barreled one. Um, so first of all, I'm curious if the province has any idea how many tenants have been affected by rent evictions in the meantime, the three years since this recommendation um, came forward. And you were also talking about, you know, landlords who want to get rid of a long-term tenant so they can jack up the rent, which, you know, the re curtailing rent evictions could help, but what could help more potentially as some tenant advocacy organizations have been putting forward for a while now is capping the amount that landlords are allowed to raise the rent um, in between tenancies. Now that's something that the task force decided not to recommend. I'm wondering if that is maybe something that is being considered at this point in time. Okay, so two questions in one. Uh, I guess how, uh, how to jump in here. I, I think the reason that uh, we brought forward this legislation around stopping rent evictions is because that was one of the uh, main ways that we heard landlords were using to get rid of people uh, that they wanted to get rid of to, to increase rents. And so by making it clear exactly uh, how the renovation process is to work, uh, I think we can stop uh, most of those uh, phony cases, uh, the cases where people would lose their home for no good reason. And we can actually just allow uh, good renovations to go on and people to stay in their homes. Uh, I think what I've found, at least in my work as an MLA, is since the changes that we started making in uh, 2017, uh, we've seen the demand for help uh, go down considerably. Uh, people uh, have called the residential tenancy branch and they've gotten the help that they needed there. Um, the compliance and enforcement team has also been able to step in in many cases to stop uh, rent evictions already. Um, a note comes in, people were getting evicted, 
They went to the branch, the branch investigated, went, wait, wait, wait a second, nobody should be getting eviction notices for this kind of work, and they could actually contact the landlord and say, put a halt on it right there, so we didn't even have to get into the process. Uh, but I'm uh, excited at what this change will mean, because it'll be really clear in law now for everybody to, to know, and uh, there won't be that process of the, the senior that I'm thinking of receiving an eviction notice being terrified and then having to call me or call the rent rental tenancy branch for advice to try and figure out where she was going to move when she didn't have to move at all. She should never have been th put through that stress because the rent eviction was phony. It was never going to happen. We want that to go away and with that legislation, this, this legislation, I think it will. Next question is from Andrew McLeod, the TIE. Yeah, hi, Spencer. Um, a couple things. Just, uh, I mean, the first part of Shannon's question was was really about tying rents to units, and that's something, as she said, the task force rejected, and that this bill seems not to do. What What, what is the resistance to tying rents to units rather than to the tenants? Uh, we've looked at that issue. Uh, I think what we want to do is make sure that we can have more rental housing in BC, uh, that the rental housing can be maintained in good order, um, and that the system is fair for all parties. And so I think it's a balance, obviously. Uh, there are those who want us to go way in one direction or those who want us to go way in the other direction. You know, we've heard for calls to completely stop any rents from going up ever, and then we've heard from the other side that rents should be allowed to go up as much as anybody wants them to. Uh, so we've tried to find a good balance to protect people in their homes, to keep life more affordable, thus the rent freeze, uh, and I think we're meeting that balance. Andrew, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yes, please. Uh, the, the other thing um, advocates sometimes call for with, with renovations is giving the tenants who've been moved out the right to return at the same rent that it, it had before the renovation. Is, is that something uh, the government has contemplated, and why or why not? Uh, certainly something that I've looked at and considered. Uh, we looked at it at, as the task force. Uh, in the end, the task force didn't come to agreement that that was the direction we should go in. Uh, instead, deciding that we needed to beef up enforcement, which has made a big difference, uh, clarify the rules to make sure that there is fairness, um, and that's the direction we're going to continue to move in. I think uh, what we've seen, uh, anecdotally anyways, in the last while is uh, vacancy rates increase. We've seen more offers uh, uh, to reduce rent, uh, to get people to come into units uh, and live there as their homes. Uh, I hope we can continue to move in that direction with more housing coming on stream, more affordable housing for people to choose from, um, and of course things like the rent freeze uh, that has made life more affordable this year uh, and last year as well. That's all the questions we have for today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of your afternoon.